What's up YouTube? This time in this video, we're actually going to dive into the effects of aperture when you're shooting with flash. So how does the aperture actually affect shooting flash? This is going to be different than the last video that I did regarding off-camera flash where I showed how you can get rid of a background uh, to make the background completely black by using the shutter speed. This is going to solely be just about the aperture and the effects that it actually has in flash. Um, a lot of people don't believe me that you can actually control the flash output in regards to uh, just changing the aperture, right? This isn't gonna be about the depth of field. I mean, there, there's a billion different elements all in regards to what happens when you change the aperture, but this is just solely to show you what that actual effect has on external flash. It doesn't matter if it's external or built-in flash or whatnot. Um, so let's just get right down to it. And let's go! How's this for some dramatic lighting, eh? <laughs> Uh, anyway, unfortunately my charger died, so I could not actually charge the batteries for my trigger. So unfortunately, um, actually this is going to be a pretty good example, because I have to use two flashes to fire. Yeah, uh, so I've got my TT350P set up in slave mode, which is optically going to be triggered by the built-in flash on the Pentax K3. Uh, so this is going to fire off. I have this set in manual to 1 1 28th power, so it's as low as it can go. Uh, so this is going to fire off, and then it's going to actually trigger my TT350P in my 24 by 24 inch softbox, and I will be standing down the hall in there somewhere. Um, yeah, so... That's pretty much uh, the way the setup's gonna be. And I'll, the only thing I'm gonna change is the aperture. So we're gonna start probably overexposed and then work our way down. Hopefully at the end of this, you'll have an idea as to what the effects of aperture have on your flash photography. And uh, let's do it. So I started off with the flash at one to one power. I did not touch the power on the flash. We're starting at F4 at the flash sync speed of 1 1 80th of a second and uh, ISO 100. Again, the only thing that I'm changing is the aperture. Now you'll see all the blinking, the blinkies. That is a uh, highlight, um, highlight warning. So basically uh, I just went through, here I am at f5.6 and you'll notice that the blinkies start going away. So it's not overexposed in the highlight area. You can see there's less Less blinky blink over on this image. And then after that, uh, what I did was I went to 6.3 for the aperture. And again, you'll notice that uh, it actually is making a remarkable difference in regards to controlling the flash output. Now, the reason for the video, I just wanted to prove a point that you can make ultra fine adjustments just by changing the aperture slightly in regards to the light output that's being recorded from the flash itself. So you don't only have, you, you have more options available to you basically. You can adjust the flash power output directly from the flash itself. You can also uh, go ahead and uh, change the aperture. You can change the ISO. You know, all those things will change how much flash lighting gets into the image. But if you want to make ultra fine adjustments, you can actually change the aperture. As long as you do keep in mind that the depth of field will change as well. So here at f8, you can see that uh, it's pretty much gone. There's no more blinkies, all the highlights are not overexposed and it's actually a perfect flash image. Uh, but I decided to keep going just to prove the point. So here's F11. And uh, once this actually fires off, you'll see the image itself, like there isn't much flash lighting getting in. You can see that I'm a bit darker. The white on the door is pretty much perfectly exposed. Uh, but again, 
me and myself, I was a bit dark, so I decided, okay, let's just go to F16. Let's let's just go up there. I mean, I don't think you'd ever shoot flash at F16, but I just wanted to do it in this video just to prove a point. And you can see it's still actually not a bad image, even at F16. And then, uh, you know, just decided that I would review, uh, you know, just go backwards, starting at F16, then F11, then F8, now F5.6, sorry, 6.3, now 5.6, and F4. And you can see how much of a difference it actually makes in regards to the flash lighting coming in. As I go up in aperture, you'll notice that the, you know, it's not as overexposed. So you can use aperture to your advantage, uh, you know, to completely fine tune your actual flash exposure. So there you have it. The effects of aperture when you're shooting flash with your Pentax camera, any camera actually. Um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. You saw the results for yourself. And if you like the video, leave a like. If you have not already, please do subscribe. It helps me out. If you'd like me, blah, 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 blah. Ooh. If you'd like to support the channel, I leave that information at the bottom of the description. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And that's it for me. You guys will see me on my next video. I'm out.